the greatest risk really seems to be in that first trimester of pregnancy. So for women who are trying to become pregnant or who are pregnant, the biggest concern is really to avoid exposure to the virus. And that is best done right now by limiting travel to those areas where we know that Zika virus is being transmitted. And if you're in those areas, to avoid mosquito bites as much as possible. We don't have definitive proof of how Zika actually is transmitted from the mother to the fetus. There is transmission or passage of the virus from the maternal bloodstream into the fetal bloodstream across the placenta. At least one study that's shown that you can find high levels of the virus in the placenta and the membranes of a fetus that's been infected with Zika virus. And so that probably represents a place where the virus is harbored or stays for a long period of time and provides continued exposure to the virus for both the mother and the baby. Women who are traveling, and it's mainly to the tropical areas and subtropical areas, should discuss this with their physician prior to going on these trips. Ideally, if they're pregnant or planning to become pregnant in the near future, the current recommendation is to delay that travel. Any pregnant woman who has traveled to an area where Zika virus transmission has been reported should notify their doctor immediately upon returning. The current recommendations are for pregnant women who have traveled to these areas or who have spent a considerable amount of time in the, these areas, sh those women should have testing regardless of whether they have symptoms or not. In any woman who's symptomatic, she should immediately notify her physician so that they can begin the process of evaluating her and her fetus to determine if there is significant risk of transmission. At least as of today, all of the Zika virus infections that have been reported in the United States have been associated with travel to the countries where the virus transmission has been documented. There has not been a documented case where someone has acquired Zika virus, much less a pregnant woman acquired Zika virus in the United States from a mosquito or in the absence of a travel history. So at least as of today, that risk of anyone who's bitten by mosquitoes in the United States of acquiring Zika is very low. Right now, if one of my patients were to come to me and say that she had a trip planned to one of the countries or regions where Zika virus transmission has been reported and she was currently pregnant, I would recommend to her that she delay that trip or cancel that trip to the time when she's no longer pregnant. While there are things that can be done to reduce the risk of mosquito bites, it still may not be perfect, and there still is that theoretic risk of exposure. While initially everyone focused on microcephaly, meaning a small head measurement, what we know is that there are a lot of other effects that can occur with Zika virus as well. The virus seems to affect the brain tissue and kills or prevents the brain tissue from growing normally. It seems to provoke, through that process, an immense immune response that can affect the brain tissue as well as other developing tissues. And so there are certain brain, other than just microcephaly, there are other brain abnormalities that can occur. There are problems that can occur in the eyes and with the retina. Hearing loss has been reported. There's also an increased risk of stillbirth 
and it's thought to be related to the fact that there are such high viral levels in the placenta that then affect the placental function and may lead to stillbirth there. Microcephaly itself has a lot of different causes and the ultimate determination of what the impact of microcephaly is on that child's long-term outcome depends on the cause and depends on what the underlying problems in the brain are. Most infants that have microcephaly and the brain abnormalities to the extent of what's been described with Zika virus will have severe neurologic issues. They, are at in, they may be at increased risk for seizures, certainly developmental delay, and a number of other neurologic abnormalities. Making a diagnosis of Zika virus prior to birth we have no treatments that we can particularly use. It's a matter of symptomatic treatment for the mother and surveillance for that mother and that baby through the remainder of pregnancy. Following birth, for infants that are born with microcephaly related to Zika virus, there's no particular treatments that can be done to reverse the effects of the viral infection but the interventions are related towards whatever the symptoms that that baby is born with are. And then a matter of early intervention and addressing any special needs that that child has from an early time point on. When an individual, whether it be a man or a woman, but especially for a woman per se who has a Zika virus infection, she will have that virus in her bloodstream for around one to two weeks. She will then have the virus that we believe is circulating in her body through other organs and tissues and she may shed that for a, another up to two weeks or so. While during pregnancy the placenta may harbor the virus and allow it to be present for a longer period of time, after delivery, that virus is typically cleared. It should not have any effects on future pregnancies. The insect repellents that are on the market that include DEET or picaridin are thought to be safe. The insect repellents that contain DEET have different concentrations of DEET within them, but the most common ones that are out there have concentrations that are less than 30%. And all the data that we have on DEET suggests that it is safe to use during pregnancy, that there have been no adverse fetal effects or birth defects associated with its use. For uh, picaridin, there has not been anything associated with increased risk of birth defects with its use either. So both seem to be safe to use during pregnancy. Spray it on clothes as opposed to spraying it on their skin to try to decrease some of the absorption that they might get. And it will still help uh, repel the insects. For couples trying to conceive right now, one of the things that remains unknown is how long Zika virus can be shed in male semen. And so right now, the best recommendation that we can make in terms of avoiding Zika virus exposure in early pregnancy is for any couple that is trying to conceive or for any woman who is early pregnant that they avoid travel to areas where Zika virus transmission has been documented and that if the male partner has traveled to these areas where Zika virus transmission has occurred, that they either abstain from intercourse or use condoms regularly and correctly to avoid that exposure.